Okay, so this is the piece we're going to be starting on today. It is a huge roll top desk. It's actually incredibly beautiful. Um, it's just a bit dusty. It was sitting on the front porch of the lady who I was picking it up from. So there's just, you know, some debris in the roll top. I vacuum that out and give it a good cleaning and then we will give it a start. It's still just tucked away in its corner. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I have my vacuum with the little brush attachment on it. This made quick work of all of the debris that was in the top of the roll top. It just, there's tiny little crevices down there and it needed a brush. So this worked really well and I highly recommend I'll probably do it on every other roll top I get. All the roll tops are really, really heavy. So... Unless I find a dainty one next time, I probably wouldn't do this again. This one was free, so I couldn't not get it, but it did take me two trips to pick it up because I just have a little SUV and I had to take the bottom in one trip and then come back and get the top. The lady was super nice about it, but it was kind of a pain. So I'm using my liquid sandpaper. This doesn't have a really shiny surface on it. However, it is a vintage piece and I really love liquid sandpaper. It's also a degreaser. Um, I use it with a little scrubby pad so it really gets in there and also helps give just a little texture to the piece so that the paint sticks even better. And I'm not doing a ton of, well, I didn't initially plan on doing a ton of painting on this piece, but this is a very simple, simple look that does a lot of good with minimal effort. I will say this piece was sitting in my storage unit. It was in my storage unit before I got this shop. So I've had it for a while. It was just so large and kind of daunting to me that I <laughs> kind of put it off, which is ridiculous because generally you want to get large pieces out so that they're not taking up space but you know procrastination so I had this idea to just do the trim in black and I really liked the way that it looked and it was super easy you guys know I hate painters tape I mean I think it's great for what it is but there's no way I'm gonna go through and just paint or tape all the edges that I don't want to get. So I've just gotten really good with a brush and if you keep a damp cloth or I have a pack of wipes always near me um, and then the paint just wipes right off the surface. So it's super easy to keep it clean as you go. Now this is uh, Chalk Mountain in Blackboard. And as you can see, it's doing a marvelous job covering. So I'll end up doing a second coat just because it's for my own peace of mind, but it's covering on just the first coat. Again, if you wanted to do this look, you can use tape and that's not a big deal, but I don't like to. I feel like it's wasteful and I mean, it just, it takes more time, I think, in my opinion. So I don't know if you noticed, but when I go to cut in lines, it's usually after I dip my brush and then I will take my brush flat on the piece and kind of wipe off the excess paint and that squishes the brush flat. I do like doing it with these little angled brushes and that way it has less paint on it and the brush is kind of shaped the way that I want it to make it fit right along those lines. And as you can see, I just got some on the wood right there and wipes right off, no big deal. And this I thought was going to be faster doing it this way just because I wasn't painting an entire piece like normal and doing blends and doing all this stuff, but turns out this still took a bit of time. I'm just taking off this front little keyhole hardware so that I can get this trim. This was a, I wasn't exactly sure how I want to do this. I went back and forth about actually doing every other row in the roll top, a black wood, black wood, black wood, but I wanted this piece to sell quickly, so I didn't do that, but 
I kind of wish I did. Yeah, so I feel like this is, I mean, super simplistic. It is striking, the finished result, but it's super simple. You guys, I mean, just paint the trim a bold color. Okay, and so this spot, this very top did have a little water ring on it. And so here's the quick fix, and I don't recommend this. If you're going to keep this fully natural wood, you would honestly want to sand that down and make it right. But since I decided against leaving this this color, I'm doing a quick fix. And what you can do is you can either take the stain markers or a stain of a similar color and let it sit there and hit any nicks and scratches, or this is a watermark here. Let it sit and it will kind of fill in that, but we're gonna do a little camouflaging here. So I didn't actually like how orange the wood looked against the black, a little too Halloween-y. So I took some Mellow White and um, some of this Woodland Harvest and mixed them together to create just kind of a kind of creamy color. And then I watered it down and we're just gonna do a wash over the wood. See how it's just very black and orange? So this is gonna give kind of a bleached wood look. And since I'm gonna go over and do the black a second coat, this doesn't matter if I get any on there. However, now when I go back over it, I will need to be a little more careful with the black because it won't wipe off the wood like it would before. So I like this look way better. It's, I think, a better contrast and it just, ugh, I had to get rid of the oranginess of the wood. It just was not good. So we're just gonna go through and do this all over the entire piece. I do like to do my washes. I'm gonna say it's probably about 50-50, but so long as when you brush it on, it drips down but still leaves color, you're good to go. And you can kind of just play around with the ratios to figure out how you like to do your color washes. And so this, helped me out a lot here. I just went through with a detail brush and it's like the exact same size as the trim and it worked perfectly. Um, I just went around and made sure all my lines were really crisp and did my second coat in black around the edges with this detail brush and it cut in super smooth and then any larger areas I could just use my regular brush. And it was a little more meticulous this time around again because I have the wash on there and it won't just wipe back, because if I go to wipe it back, it will also wipe back the wash, which would defeat the purpose. Anyway, so this is what I was talking about with the water ring that I did on top with the stain. Since I was gonna do this wash over it, I knew it would kind of help camouflage some more as well. So I wasn't worried about it being perfect. So if you just need a quick fix on something like that, that's a good way to go. So I'm just using clear wax to seal this entire piece. Generally, if I'm gonna do something black and I wanna seal it with wax, I will seal it with black wax, but because I don't wanna get the black on my faux bleached wa whitewashed wood, I just use clear over the entire piece. It works great. The black will kind of um, deepen up after you wipe all the wax back.
So when you put the wax on, it works awesome in this big palm brush on a roll top in between all those things because the brush really gets down in each of the grooves. Oh, it's so nice. And then after it's been sitting on there a while-ish, I just went through and wiped it back with the, with the cloth. And then after that, I will let it kind of sit overnight and then I can buff it the next day. And here she is, or he, I think this one's a he, definitely more masculine. But I love the way it turned out, I love the contrast. Um, fingers crossed, I have a lady who just is trying to find a truck right now, and hopefully it will sell for the 300 that I had it listed for. So hopefully $300 to put towards the house fund. So wish me luck that she gets a truck, and she picks up this desk and gets it out of my shop. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers. I really appreciate you and I'll see you guys next week.